Ha! As they say down <laughs> south, we're back. And uh, Tom Gibson, Chuck Augustine, and this is Nye County. And uh, we were continuing talking uh, in the break about the uh, insurance situation. And, I, and just make it clear, everybody, if you are convicted of um, no, no insurance, then you uh, will be suspended for, uh, your driver's privilege will be suspended for a year. If you get it reduced, um, to anything else, then uh, you're okay. Your your insurance, I'm sorry, your driver's privileges will be safe. Okay, real quick before we get to Amy, uh, regarding uh, the tickets, today at the commissioner's meeting, the sheriff brought up something. I didn't catch it all, but there's going to be more interagency cooperation on distractive driving. That is, NCSO is going to work with the Highway Patrol or the state police and other agencies that weren't specified. And there was some $5,000 bond involved, and uh, there was talk about how that was going to increase revenue. So yeah. it's not going to get better. I'll put it that way. Okay, Amy, what you got, girl? Well, there's a, you were on the topic of the um, county commissioners. Uh, and Dan Schinhoffen actually is the one that decided to eliminate the first um, public comment at the Board of, Comment, Board of County Commissioners meeting. I called the Attorney General's office and spoke with Brett Kemp and his phone number for anybody listening that has any questions about open meeting laws is 775-684-1100. And uh, once again, it's 775-684-1100, and it's Brett Camp. It's K-A-N-D-P, and he is the one that is the specialist on open meeting laws. Hmm. He advised me that uh, this uh, move is actually quite legal because there are open meeting uh, comments or public comments allowed after each item number and at the end of the meeting, which is fine. Dan has been known to do things that are legal, however, not right, not morally right, but legal. And uh, this is just simply, in my opinion, one of his <clears throat> moves to deter the public from becoming involved. There have been many, many times when people get up there and they comment at the beginning. And I appreciate Tom's comment on, well, they don't have to sit there and listen to uh, people complain and, and whatever they do when they make public comment. That's what public comments are for. And it takes up just as much time in the beginning as it does in the end. So the actual purpose is to deter those people from becoming involved in our government by not allowing them to speak early on. And these are people that come in because they have children that go to school, they can't be there you know, too long, or they're there on a work break, or they go to work a little bit late, they make special arrangements for those times to speak where it's not really convenient later toward lunchtime or after lunch. And these meetings sometimes can go for hours regardless. And again, if, if there's gonna be public comment after the topic, after the agenda items, well, they're still gonna take up their three minutes and they're still gonna be in line. This whole thing is to deter public involvement and I really really hope <laughs> this man gets you know voted out of office when his time comes he does not need to be there in my opinion he's the first one to vote for taxes he's the first one to vote for anything that has to do with government and he claims to be a Republican and uh, that's my opinion and I'm really upset about it that, uh, that he does the things that are legal and he skirts on that legal fence just to get away with something that is immoral <coughs> to the rest of us. And that's the end of my rant. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that was a good one, and I agree 100% with you. I've always said the laws in, are created to protect the state, not the people. Uh, they're for the what? benefit of government to exploit the people. Let me, let me add, too, that we do have one commissioner that fights for the people, she listens to the people, she gets up there and is now has become a, quite a, a really a, a champion for the people, and that's Donna Cox. And she did speak up and say, no, this isn't right. Let's not do this. And Dan Shinhoffen is the one that did it. He's the chairperson. 
it's it's up to him. He was voted in again, and I think because you know it's not a real um, comfortable position to be in, and we we have some people that don't like that position. So he got voted in again, and he has this kind of power. But that's just to show you what he does with power. And people that are in his district better start watching and listening to what this man does because he is against us. I don't care what he says. He is not voting. He's not doing what the voters want him to do. He's doing what he thinks is right for the voters. And that's kind of like a dictator, you know. And, and we don't need public officials like that. We're not Clark County yet. So anyway, um, and the insurance thing, uh, Tom, I have a question for you about insurance. Um, if a person doesn't have insurance at the time they're stopped and they, and they just don't have it in the car and they bring in proof of insurance to the court, what happens to them at that time? Well, usually and the I'm going to get off and live. Yeah, here. usually the court will dismiss that if you come in there. If, you've already, if you have proof um, and, and, and you bring it in and you just say you just didn't have it on you or the card was on your you know, bed at home and, then, uh, and you bring that in and show the court, they'll dismiss the, the, uh, the case right there. Um, it's just when there's other problems is when they reduce it down to a no insurance on per person. All right, thanks a lot, and uh, I'll keep listening. Thank you. Okay, okay. Now, thanks here, for coming. I have an issue. I was at lunch today with a couple of uh, friends of mine, and uh, we were discussing, you know, local and, you know, national politics, and, um, and I was uh, reminded, uh, I mean, through the conversation we had, about, uh, you know, about police and police presence, and, um, and what most people don't realize is that, Cops, police. Um, historically, local police um, were not government uh, paid. They weren't government government controlled. Um, they were basically security guards. The, the, we go back to England back in the, in the uh, say the mid or early 1800s, and you had your local. Um, and even in the United States, too, in the East States, um, you, you, you always had your sheriff. The sheriff is the, the county's uh, law enforcement agent, uh, and, and uh, he is, or she is supposed to enforce the laws that, you know, passed down by, by the state in each, you know, individual county. As far as municipalities go and cities, um, those were, uh, at, for years, those were private funded and um, they were not a, a good example is when the uh, the Pinkertons uh, back in Pennsylvania had a beef with uh, the unions I mean they didn't send cops in because there weren't cops to send in they send in these private Pinkertons right. and they got all shot up right. but but, um, but the, and uh, but they did their share of shooting as well but but um, but once we decided that we wanted to, uh, or, you know, collectively, have uh, paid police officers or professional cops, um, that was supposed to, the biggie was supposed to be a good thing. And, and there was a lot of community policing in those days. And, and early, and, and what people don't seem to realize, and the cops really don't realize, they are there for the people, okay? <laughs> the, just because you got a badge, that doesn't, that doesn't empower you to bully one, bully people. It, it empowers you to make arrests without you being sued. Mm -hmm. That's really what it, the only difference between a, a cop and a, right. an individual on, on average misdemeanor situations. And, and uh, a uh, citizen can do a citizen's arrest. Right. The only problem is a citizen is not protected uh, um, like a cop is. So if you arrested somebody and you get the wrong guy, that's a false arrest, mm -hmm. and, and you'll be, you know, uh, you can be sued for it. But if you, um, but if you uh, are a cop and you make a, a false arrest, you can still be sued, but you're protected, and you have a, what's called limited immunity. And so when you're sued, <clears throat> uh, they have to show more than just that you'd made a mistake. Yeah, I, uh, we, get, we got a call coming in, but let me real quick say my feelings on if we can't get rid of government totally, as people know, I'm an anarchist, which means I simply believe we could work out a better way to solve all the problems without giving this incredible power to government. And it, it's gone from the initial constitution with very limited government right. to this monster. But regarding police, do away with unions. That's ridiculous to have unions, whether it be the military, 
Uh, Reagan did away with the uh, control air, air traffic, traffic controllers. controllers. Yeah. Uh, police should not have unions. They should not be immune to the laws. This insanity of protecting <clears throat> police when they're clearly wrong, whether it be murder or anything else, has got to stop. They've got to be held accountable, just like we should be. Sure. We got a caller here. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, is it? Yep. That's me. Hi. What you got, girl? Hey, I just want to say I've been here 22 years. I love it here. I love our police force. Uh, uh, the 22 years I've been here, all they've been is kind to me and my late husband. They're always there when we, well, not always there when we need them, because I could... You know, I like to carry one around in my in the back seat of my car sometimes for these crazy drivers out there. But I praise our police station. And the uh, fire that happened today was right across the street from my house. And I'm so sad to hear those people lost their home, but everybody was safe. And the fire department did a great job. So I have nothing but praise. That's because I tried not to do anything wrong, I guess, maybe. <laughs> Okay, well, but do you think we need cops? Absolutely. Why? Okay, the people that decide to go 55 miles an hour to the 35 mile an hour zone and pull out from stop, uh, don't stop for stop signs. And uh, the, for the criminals, the people that rob places, the doggone corner stores get robbed. At one time when I first moved here, the <clears throat> corner store, now Coyote was called Rob's Corner Store, and that's what they did, they robbed it. <laughs> but I do believe we need a police force because we can't police, uh, people don't police themselves and we basically, I know we have the authority to make citizens arrest. I choose not to, unless it was push come to shove, but you, I, I know that we can do that. Do you own a dog? Yeah, yeah, she, she'd lick the, the, the uh, robber to death before she'd bite it. <laughs> No, I mean, it's because there's a, a joke um, that, that uh, remember Forrest Gump, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what's going to happen yeah. or what you're going to get. Okay, well, there's another expression. They, it's, a, it's a play on that uh, expression. Uh, cops are like a box of chocolates. They'll kill your dog. I heard about that. <laughs> and it uh, just happened the other day. I've got to actually have a, yeah. a, a client uh, meeting with, uh, had his dog shot dead for, um, and, and uh, there was no call for it. And I want to be one of the first people that, that tries to get uh, serious money because all they do is they pay for the value of your dog. Oops, sorry, I killed your dog. When people don't, you know, in, in the in past, they just go, well, it's chattel. We can't assign huge dollar amounts to it. But I'd like to see that change because the co cops would rather shoot your dog than, um, you know, make a phone call or, or shout at your house to tell you to come out of the house. Okay, uh, Stephanie, we're going to have to go to break. If you want to hang on, fine. If not... No, I uh, said all I have to say. Okay, thanks. So and we'll, talk, we'll talk more about dogs and police after the break.